Chapter seven, you've done your preparation and now you need to decide how much or what do you actually want to ask for? So decide what level of pay rise you're looking for. It's important here not to appear greedy, but rather to remain realistic and reasonable. So to start off with, know your outcome range. Know what your bottom dollar is and what number would just make you dance out of the office and feel fantastic. After conducting your research internally and externally within the market, define what would be a good level that you'd be happy with and also that you'd be ecstatic with. Now, give that range to your boss when you do your presentation. For example, you can tell your boss that your ideal salary would be $75,000 with a range of $72,000 to $78,000. So that explains to them what you would accept as a bottom dollar, what you'd ideally like, and what you consider would be a really good outcome for you. Now, when you're looking at that top end, you need to know what the ceiling is. And this is important. You should never ask for an amount above the top end of what your position is worth in the market, unless you have an exceptionally good reason to do so. So you've had a magnificent year, you've performed beyond any other person's performance, then you can go above that ceiling. But this is about doing your research and using your intuition, your general knowledge about how to pitch it just right with the substantiated track record to prove that you're worth it. So when you're doing this, don't start at the top. Too many employees will go in asking for a pay rise and go right for the top dollar and expect to be beaten down. That's not a good idea because A, your boss might think that you're trying to milk the company and B, that you really are pushing the boundaries and having a go just for the sake of it. So. Another thing that I've found in a lot of times when people ask for a pay rise, if they ask for the big sum, okay? You need to talk in small increments. So let's just say that you came to your boss and you said, I'd like an extra $5,000 a year. $5,000 is a substantial amount of money. Alternatively, I'd like you to consider a pay rise of $40 a week. $40 a week isn't a lot of money, but 40 times 50 is still $5,000. So, talk in small increments. Here's one tip I'm gonna give you, which virtually assures, if you can do it, that you will get a pay rise. And that is, you're gonna tell your boss how your boss is going to pay for your pay rise. So, if you anticipate bringing home a project in the next three months, or you've got a sales pipeline that's virtually confirmed that you know is gonna go in, and you can get your boss to take that into consideration, then that tells them how they're gonna substantiate, maybe to their superiors, why you deserve the pay rise in the first place. If you can do that, you're well on your way to being in such a strong position that they virtually can't say no. So all of those points are really about the actual salary that you're asking for. What if it's not about the money? What else can you ask for? Well, here's some ideas. You can negotiate for other things. For you, you might be time poor. So you might be able to negotiate a nine day fortnight or certain hours of the, certain days of the week when you get to knock off early or do something else. If you're operating at a high level, you're probably doing work at home anyway, so it might not make much of a difference to them, but for you, it's about time. You could ask for extra holidays. So instead of having four weeks a year, you might ask for five weeks a year. You could ask for simple things like a wardrobe allowance. You might be able to ask for rental assistance. Um, you might be able to ask for you know, a company car, or if you've already got a company car, you might be able to ask for a better company car. Something to think about. The other thing which uh, is interesting because it doesn't cost your organize anything, organization anything, you might ask for a different title. In a lot of circumstances, having a title is very important to a person's self-worth. In other circumstances, it's all about the money. So consider what's important to you. 
So if you're working as a sales engineer, maybe the change of title to senior sales engineer would also sweeten the package. And what's that gonna cost the company? Nothing. Now, once you've actually decided what you want, be prepared to negotiate. You must get ready to compromise and negotiate even if you have given your boss a realistic figure. And you have to be realistic and reasonable. A high salary is a good goal, but an astronomical one is edging on being greedy or being in an impossible promise to live up to. At this time, you've really got to ask yourself the question, is this organisation that I'm working for the right one for me? And this is where you have to ask about your own X factor. What makes you special? Because you might have special skills that in the size of the company you're working for or in the location that you're working, they won't be able to take into consideration or they won't be able to use, but other employers in the market will see those and value them at a higher level. So what's your X factor and can the organisation afford it? Just remember, there is always a range to work in. So bear in mind that even in large, wealthy, profitable companies, they need to remain profitable by not bloating salaries of their employees. All the time you hear these days about people earning outrageous wages, wages, outrageous wages, which aren't really justified or just seem socially unacceptable. I'm not saying that that's you, but do take into consideration account where you are deciding how much or what are you gonna ask for.